Hello everyone, welcome back to the draw pod. Uh, my initial intro was a little wacky, so I'm just popping in really quickly to say hello. Welcome back. So this is now called Draw Pod by Elise Andrews. And yeah, so if you're listening to this on any of the podcast listening platforms, basically this is a visual podcast that is accompanied by a video of me doing a drawing of some sort. Um, This week I am doing one about my Madrid memories since I was in Madrid this time last year. So if you would prefer to watch the video, you can find that on my YouTube channel, which is Elise Andrews, E-L-Y-S-E, Andrews. And then Or if you prefer to just listen along here, then you can just listen on here. It's not really super visual. It's just if you want the video, you can watch it. So yeah, welcome back to the draw pod. Um, So I guess I'll just start with uh, what I've been up to. So I just got back yesterday from when I'm recording this from like the Dallas-Fort Worth area where I was visiting my boyfriend and his family for about a week and a half. And that was so nice. So nice to see him. I had a great time there. And yeah, I'm, but I am happy to be back here. I got to walk my dogs this morning for the first time in a while. And I'm sure they enjoy their walk a lot. I did for sure. (laughs) Except it is getting very hot. (laughs) Um, I mean, when I leave for my walks, it's about like 75 degrees, but the humidity has been pretty crazy. Uh, lately in Austin. So I don't think I can really leave any earlier and have like cooler weather. I think it's pretty much like we're set in like the mid seventies. So I just got to deal with it and maybe just wear more tank tops. But so I did that this morning. Uh, I woke up again at six 30, like I usually do when I'm here and it's nice to kind of be back on my routine. So Let's talk quickly about some new things that I learned from this past week. So, one, I need to follow up with people. And this is in terms of my current adventure into networking that I've been doing. Well, I don't, it is networking, but I don't like to call it that because the original kind of definition of that in my head is kind of weird to me. I just, it's it's just kind of freaks me out a little bit just thinking about you know, a bunch of people in suits shaking hands, getting to know each other, asking for jobs. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm really just trying, I guess you could call it an inter- informational interview, but I've been calling a lot of alumni from my school and in my sorority and who do careers that I would be interested in doing and asking them how they managed to get to that spot because our school doesn't have a graphic design uh, major. So everyone who's been able to weasel their way into getting a job in graphic design, I kind of want to, you know, pick their brains and see how they did it. But anyway, I need to follow up with people. Uh, I, a big part of this networking process is, you know, maintaining these connections. So whenever they, you know, if a job appears at their job, um, if there's an opening, then you can, then they might think of you and refer you or tell you to apply. And um, just having one conversation, I don't think is really quite enough to really stick in their minds. So I'm uh, dedicated in the next month of like July to following up with um, pretty much all the people that I've talked to so far, uh, making changes to my portfolio and sending it off to people, just kind of solidifying these connections that I have been making and also make new ones. So that's something, you know, I I still need to make my video about how to make connections. I'm trying to talk to more people and uh, before I make a YouTube video about it, but I would like to make something about networking in the coming weeks. Um, and then also the other thing that I learned or more realized is that it has only been a month since I graduated, pretty much, <laughs> when I'm recording this. I'm recording it on uh, June 21st, and it's only been a month, and I feel like it has been six months, which is crazy. And so, yeah, it's just basically, I shouldn't stress out too much about not having a job. I came to this realization because um, I believe that it, it's nice that the publication, uh, they post like design and art-related things, but... They um, they have this series for like recent graduates that I've been following, and I don't know. Just reading this one 
uh, girl's testimony or not testimony, but just that's a weird word to s- describe it as. But just she wrote about her experience graduating in 2008 during that recession. And um, she said that she, it took her 18 months to get her first full time job. And for some reason, just reading it then really clicked with me. And I was like, oh, I don't need to stress out about this too much. We are in a pandemic right now. I can't, I just can't, I can't worry about it. Um, And I feel like I've been kind of pushing myself to go at a pace that might be too quick, but you know, I'm, I'm enjoying what I'm doing right now, but that was just something I had to realize and think about like, okay, Elise, it's only been like a month since you've graduated. You're doing a really good job. So (laughs) that was something else that I learned this week. So um, I guess I can get more into what I did this past week a little bit. Um, Pretty much, I was just at my boyfriend's house, um, hanging out with him, watching some movies, and I did watch some Love Island, and I watched All of Too Hot to Handle with him. That is just, I don't know, I don't ever watch, like, reality TV like that. It was enjoyable. Um, I'm very, it's very interesting to see how, like, the production of these reality shows has really gone up, like the quality of like the editing and the B-roll that they have. And just, I I was, I was very impressed by kind of this style of reality TV. So maybe that's just my calm major speaking, but that was one thing I did. You know, I don't watch a lot of TV in general. Pretty much the only show that I will watch is Veep because it is my like favorite show. And I would, I never am not laughing at it. Like it, every single episode I watch, I know it will make me laugh at least once. So I have to watch it. Um, but other than that, I really just watch a lot of YouTube. (laughs) That's pretty much my TV movie thing that I, uh, my media consumption that I focus on. I watch a lot of YouTube and I listen to a lot of podcasts. So anyway, um, another thing, well, another form of, I guess, kind of media or things to pass time I've been doing. I finished, uh, well, I haven't finished it yet, but I'm about 20 pages from finishing my book, um, Emotional Design by Don Norman. Uh, This book came out in 2004, and uh, it kind of reflects that. I enjoyed, like, literally maybe, like, 80 or 90% of this book. It kind of talks about user experience design and, like, kind of the emotional ties that we have to everyday things and objects and how, you know, a lot of the time people believe that the most functional product is the best, but there's also definitely an argument for um, aesthetics and the emotional connection that you have to objects. So I think that Don Norman's books in general, he has this book and then the design of everyday things. I've probably talked about it on another episode, but yeah, um, I think everyone should read these books. They are really interesting and makes you think about the world that you're in a little differently. But my main issue with it, and I think it's because it was written in 2004, is because the last like two chapters of it, like maybe like over, maybe around 100 pages were about robots. <laughs> And I think that was probably more at the front of people's minds in 2004. But I just don't really care about robots that much. But he does, you know, it is about emotional design and how, like, robots should have emotions or they should be designed to appeal to our emotions, which I get. It's just, you know, robots aren't quite the thing. But, you know, in 2004, you can't predict everything. So I just have to finish about 20 more pages of robot talk. But in general, I'd probably give this book like a four out of four out of five. I liked it. Um, and so I finished that book, which was great. I've been moving through my books pretty quickly. I try to do like at least 20 pages a day, like 20 pages or 20 minutes. Um, just depending on the time that I have. And then sometimes I'll read more, you know, like I did kind of a marathon sprint a few days ago just because I wanted to get through more of the book um, and start my next book, which is Rebecca Solnit's um, A Field Guide to Getting Lost. I won't, I promise this isn't a book club book review podcast, but I just wanted to mention it because I have been enjoying reading a lot lately. Um, This book was recommended to me by 
my outdoor studio professor at Trinity, and I asked her for some recommendations for good books about kind of um, environmentalism and nature and wilderness and things of that sort, because that's what a lot of her art focuses on, um, my professors, and um, what her classes focus on. And so, yeah, I've just been really interested in that kind of nonfiction um, type of book that's not quite about, or I don't know, this might, this might be fiction or something, um, but it's just different. Like, I don't really need a, um, I don't, I'm not as into stories about like a, like a fiction story, if you know what I mean. Um, so I am excited to dig into that. Hopefully that'll be a fast read for me. And then after that, I have another book about, um, nature that I bought that she recommended for me. So I'm going to read that and I'm finishing up brand thinking and other noble pursuits. So that's my little book ramble for now, but reading has been so much fun. I have just more, I guess, mental capacity to read and enjoy reading now that I'm not in school. So that's definitely been something really nice to return to because when I was in like fourth or fifth grade, I would just zoom through books like Oh my gosh, I was such a fast and great reader. But you kind of have to get back into it. So um, pretty much like what's going on um, right now is I'm just planning on getting some stuff done today for <laughs> rebranding this podcast. And also um, I have to do these little stickers for my grandpa who he makes a lot of homemade salsa from his garden. And I... Um, for like kind of a Father's Day gift, my mom wanted me to make these cute little designs of stickers that say like J and J's, um, J and J's kitchen, or which is like Jenna Marbles and Julian, but something like that, like J and J salsa or something of the sort. So I'm gonna make a bunch of those stickers using my Cricut machine, and that's gonna be really fun. And I also want to record my post grad update video which will be interesting because I'm still trying to figure out how I feel about um, being graduated for one month. Um, and you'll see it that it'll, it'll probably come out on the Tuesday after this uh, podcast episode goes up. But I'm just trying to figure out how I feel about this one month post-grad update. I mentioned it that, you know, it's, it's only been one month and I need to you know, maybe be less harsh on myself about everything. But I don't know. I've really learned a lot in this past month. And I have a lot of faith in my ability to be successful moving forward. I also have a lot of work to do. I thought I was like set and that my portfolio looked good. And I was like, why, why am I not getting jobs? And, you know, part of it, you know, is definitely pandemic situation, you know. Um, but the other part of it is uh, I definitely have a lot of work I need to do on like centering my portfolio more on um, just kind of, or just organizing it more. I need to work on presenting myself is kind of what I'm moving into the next little stage of like um, job application preparation stuff. So I think I'm just going to keep applying to stuff and then I'm going to uh, also be completely reworking my portfolio. Um, so, yeah. Oh, also, I guess one thing I'll kind of finish this pod off. I'm going to try and keep them about 15 minutes. Um, they were getting a little long with like 20 minutes. <laughs> but um, the last thing I just wanted to talk about is that I am really excited about my sticker shop that I've been doing on Redbubble. Uh, I've been making a lot more sales lately and, you know, some of it was from my friends. Shout out to Kira for um, ordering on my Redbubble and helping me get there. But I think, well, I pretty much did make the $20 in one month for the threshold, which is how you can get that $20 paid to you. Otherwise, they hold on to it until you reach the $20, then they pay you. But I, that has been my New Year's resolution. My goal for a long time was to finally in 2020 hit that mark. And so I didn't quite get paid for it um, a few days ago for like the month of June. But that was because um, 
not all the sales have processed and you can only get the money if they have like completely processed and, you know, been produced and shipped. So that didn't happen, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to hit the 20 mark um, this month as well uh, and get paid in July. So I'll be getting like probably around $40. So anyway, that's just a really exciting piece of news I wanted to share. And um, it's just been really great putting so much effort into this project for two years and finally um, seeing a lot of payoff from it. So um, it's really cool seeing my charts and seeing how I grow. So that's something I'm proud of myself for this week. But anyway, I think I'm just going to wrap it up here. Thank you so much for listening. Um, as always, if you have any suggestions um, about how I should run this podcast or um, any advice or things you'd like to hear me talk about, please let me know. If you know me, you can text me. Um, but if not, you can comment on this YouTube video. Also, if you liked it um, and you're listening to it on a podcast app, or if you're not, if you want to just find it and rate it or like it or whatever your podcast platform is, uh, I would really appreciate it. I'd love to hear your thoughts and I hope you are really enjoying this and getting some value from it. So thank you again for your time and listening and I hope you have a wonderful week ahead.